Excuse me while I get my glasses on so I can see what I'm looking at. I want to welcome everyone this morning. Uh, we finally had a little sunshine, it looks like. It's been a while. And anybody watching on Facebook, I want to welcome you and thank you for tuning in this morning. Are there any guests in the congregation? <laughs> Welcome, and I'm glad you came to join us. And thank you. Uh, and I welcome any guests that are watching on Facebook. And if you ever get in the area, we welcome you to stop in and visit with us. The announcements. Uh, Tim Geetler had an announcement to make. Good morning, everyone. Um, yesterday, the, there was a small crew of us who uh, went to work for Habitat for Humanity. We were down at uh, California and Winnebago, South City area. They moved us. We were originally supposed to be near Crown Candy, but because of the weather and stuff, we worked inside. So yesterday, we had Michael Daniels, Carl Clazing, and Tim Payer. They were in one house with some crews from Eden, and then I was with some other folks from Eden and uh, the homeowner and her son, and then a the homeowner and her mom and her brother from Lookaway, which is where we worked last year. She was still earning points, volunteering. She hasn't quite moved in yet. She was there as well, and then we also had um, a member from Kirkwood UCC, so. The guys in one house were doing blocking for the ceiling, and I was helping with trim in the other house. And we were there quite a while, and got quite sweaty, and worked up a good work. <laughs> but um, the homeowners were all very grateful. So um, thanks to all the crew that helped yesterday. And I think Carl Clazing has an announcement for us, and I bet everyone knows what he's going to be talking about. Good morning. Well, first of all, before what I was going to talk about, I did work with Tim, and that's the first time I volunteered, and it is very rewarding to work with Habitat. It's neat to see what takes place and the homeowners are there helping build, not necessarily their house, but they're putting ours in. So if you ever get a chance, yeah, we're tired today, but it is well, well worth it. I haven't swung a hammer that much in a long time. What I'm up here for is probably you all know, November 2nd is, thank you, we're smart, our big sausage supper, and it takes, it takes everybody to, uh, make that happen. So I just wanted to get the word out. Everybody should have gotten a constant contact this week, I think. If you haven't, you'll be seeing it soon. It'll also be in the newsletter, whether you get a paper one or our email. But again, um, the constant contact had a way to order uh, raw sausage if you want to do that online. If you're not comfortable doing that, there's forms at the back of church. If you just want to pick one up after church, there's one to order the sausage. And there's one to um, donate desserts, whether it's a pie or your favorite dessert, just nothing that needs to be refrigerated. So, and of course, cook sausage in the morning, eat in the afternoon, serve tables in the afternoon, whatever you can do to help. The best thing to do is spread the word. Thank you. Thanks, Carl and Tim. Uh, the rest of the announcements are in the back of the uh, program, but there are some. I want to, is Nancy? Yeah, Nancy, happy birthday. I see your birthday is coming up. <laughs> happy birthday. Uh, coffee and donuts, again, will be downstairs. And Pastor Juana, if you're available 
come down and we have a, a study that talks over your sermon and asks questions and we discuss it and everything. So please join us. And we've got coffee and we've got donuts. Okay. Uh, a few of the announcements, I'm not going to go through all of them, but I'm going to hit quite a few of them because a lot of important ones. Uh, the Board of, Edu Board of Christian Education meets Tuesday. The Quilters, I think you're pretty much every week, you know, but I'll, I'll mention it. They're on Wednesday at 9. Mission Impossible is meeting this Wednesday. Pardon? Okay. A uh, manual fellowship meeting would be Thursday in the reception room. Our choir will hold practice this Thursday at 7 in the reception room. Uh, the St. Louis Association fall meeting is Saturday, October 5th at Pilgrim UCC. And I believe we have some people going, but if anybody else wants to check with Jennifer on that uh, in the office. Uh, let's see. Bon Appetit is meeting Saturday, October 12th. And contact Sandy Morello if you have any questions. The annual congregation meeting has been in the uh, bulletin for several weeks, but please remember, mark your calendars. It's October 20th, uh, right after the church service. And Carl hit the wish mark, so if you want to look at any others, they're all listed in the back of the bulletin. I want to give you an, another report on Pastor Dan. I've contacted Kimberly, and she said that uh, to tell everybody that Pastor Dion is progressing as his doctors have anticipated. He has some good days and he has some bad days. It's just the way the medicine works. Um, but overall, he's in very good spirits. And I think on the good days, he's getting a little anxious to get out, but the doctors aren't going to let him do that until they say it's okay. Uh, he, she said he enjoys his morning coffee and he's reading the daily countdown that the youth gave him uh, before he went in. Remember, they gave him cars for each day, and I can't remember how many, but he really enjoys reading those cars. And as a side note, I know he has his uh, phone there, so any emails you want to send him or any cards, uh, send him. I, I'd suggest right now, send the cards to his house, and then Kimberly can bring him to the hospital because it's kind of up in the air when he's going to get out. So if you send something, it might already be out. So just send him to his house. Uh, let me see. And he does want to thank everyone for the calls and text messages and prayers. I know he really appreciates the prayers that people give for him, so keep him in your prayers. And other than that, he, I'm sure on days where he's feeling good, he's feeling bored too. So that's understandable. I mean, hospitals aren't really a fun place to be when you're feeling good. But please keep him in your prayers. And like I said, any cards or messages, he would greatly appreciate. I want to uh, thank Pastor Juana Thomas for being our minister and delivering the message this morning. Welcome. And I think that's all I have. Is there any announcements or anything from the congregation that would like to be brought to our attention? There being none, we will continue with the service.
call to worship. Let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, Holy One, our Rock and Redeemer. Let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, Holy One, our Rock and Redeemer. Let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, Holy One, our Rock and Redeemer. For whatever we gather in your name, we find holy ground. Whenever we call you, we find a fresh encounter. However, we know you. We find we bleed. Praise God. <coughs>
join me in the invitation. Almighty God, we come before you in humble reverence, asking for your grace and guidance, for you have a perfect union of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Make us one as you are one, for we are your children and members of your body. As we gather to worship you, may our voices and hearts be in harmony, reflecting your love and unity. Please help us to welcome one another, embrace our unique identities, and see them as a source of delight and strength. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. The first reading will come from Psalms, the 25th chapter, the first through the fifth verse. I offer my life to you, Lord, my God. I trust you. Please don't let me be put to shame. Don't let my enemies rejoice over me. For that matter, don't let anyone who hopes in you be put to shame. Instead, let those who are treacherous without excuse be put to shame. Make your words known to me, Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth. Teach it to me, because you are the God who saves me. The second reading is from James, the fifth chapter, the 13th through the 20th verse. Are you among you suffering? They should pray. Are you cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are you among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed the prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its forest. My, my brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. Thank you. Amen. Will you join me in the prayer for transformation and new life? We acknowledge the need for repentance and transformation. We are confused about seeking the common good with control in our neighbor. We have mistaken unity for uniformity. We have co-signed on societal norms that divide, segregate, and exclude rather than becoming agents of cultural change. Transform our hearts and stir our souls. Ignite a spirit of curiosity, hospitality, and reconciliation to make things right with our neighbors and friends. Lead us on the path of belonging. Amen. And we have this assurance this morning that we are wonderfully and fearfully made. We are not bound 
by the pressures of culture or the attitudes of our past. We are heirs and joined heirs to the kingdom of God. Press forward with the grace to transform and create a world reflecting the reign of God with peace, justice, and righteousness for all. Let us sing together. Amen. Thank you, Shema, for that beautiful selection. 
sometimes we don't get to engage some of those songs anymore. I was back in when I was younger, and it was a particular choir that would sing that song. Thank you, thank you for that memory. Sweet, sweet, sweet lead into this song. Good morning, everyone. Great morning to you. Uh, all praise be to God. All thanks be to your pastor for the opportunity to share a word this morning. I, um, you have heard the scripture, and this morning we're going to take a moment to deal with the believer's word. Won't you pray with me? God, we come to you in this moment with expectation. We're thankful for this day. We are open to what you have to say to us. God, let your spirit fall fresh in this moment. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O oh God. Be acceptable in thy sight, O oh God, you are my strength and my redeemer. Amen and amen. So I'm going to start here. When crisis happens, what's the first thing that we usually want to do? We want to act. We want to fix the problem ourselves. We want to have the final say oftentimes. But as followers of Christ, as believers, we are called to pray about everything first and throughout all seasons and circumstances. Prayer reminds us that we are not in control. God is. And God is enough. So in this passage that you heard this morning, the writer makes it clear, prayer changes perspective. Prayer has the power to transform situations. So growing up, I recall attending a revival every year at my church. And the visiting preacher was this tall man with a stately presence who always wore a black suit and was very fitted and he had this booming bass voice. And he would call out to the congregation to repeat these words. And I'm going to ask you to repeat these words with me this morning. He would say, much prayer, much power. Little prayer, little power. No prayer, no power. And that's what I remember every year, year after year. And on the surface, the message made sense to me, right? Because I'm a younger person. However, the impact would not be felt until I was a little bit older, until I had experienced more of the 100 mile per hour curveballs that life was going to throw at my face with my glasses on and no helmet. And better understood that nobody but God brought me through. There was no other explanation. And here's the thing. I began to learn that I specifically felt a lighter load when I went through those times with a faithful community that I trusted and I had relationship with rather than staying off somewhere and being in total isolation. So what do I mean? In the world of healthcare, that's what I do outside of here. In the world of healthcare, social support means something. I cannot even have a hip replacement on this bad hip without demonstrating to the surgeon that I have somebody else who can assist me during my recovery. So why then would I want to walk through life, the joy, the twists, the turns, the trials, without being in constant communication with God and a faith community who joins me in prayer, that I might better discern what God wants me to do and, 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 and what God wants me to say. 
So prayer is a vital part of Christian life. And a supportive community is essential for spiritual growth. Now, we're not talking about just any prayer this morning. Because as I was prepping for this, I had to sit with the fact that all religions have some form of communication with what they consider to be a higher being or force. And the internet is crawling with sites that point to studies that proclaim that even those who do not believe say that they pray sometimes, especially in times of crisis, for themselves or for family and friends, just in case there happens to be someone in the universe that's there listening and that will help. So while I believe those sincere cries are received, this morning we are talking about a believer's prayer or what some of the Bibles say, the prayer of faith. We're talking about the prayer that is initiated because one is convinced, one is convicted, one has an unquestionable, strong belief way deep down inside that God is real, that God exists and is the creator of all things and the ruler of all things and that God will take care of you way deep down inside, they believe that. And now, some of you, whether here or in Facebook, might be hearing these words and thinking, yeah, I'm a believer, but I have more growing to do. And so guess what? You're in the right place this morning. Yes, you are. So what are some of the things that we should know about the believer's prayer that will strengthen our discipleship? Well, for one thing, we should know that the believer's prayer is active. Let the church say amen, amen. Remember what I said, that oftentimes we want to act. And the problem in that is not that we want to do something to change the circumstance. The problem is, is that we start moving without consulting God. Prayer, beloved, is is doing something. It's the first step in the continuum. When you pray, you are actively speaking to God and listening for God's voice, for God's instruction. We do this by praising and confessing sins. We do this by thanking God and asking for our needs and desires to be aligned with God's heart. Prayer is communion with our Creator. And so you might be praying with your voice. You might be praying through a worshipful song or a dance. You might be praying with your tears when you cannot muster the words. You might be praying with your feet, like making sure that you get out to vote in ways that care for God's creation. You might be praying with your body putting it in harm's way sometimes, like the leaders and participants in the civil rights marches, to, dis- to provide uh, discomfort in the people in the systems that oppress. Prayer is active. It moves us to the next step, which is a space to do the work. That's what we're trying to get to half the time. But we start with that one-on-one connection. A space to do the work that God is calling us to do for ourselves and for the benefit of others. We have a living faith. Before you engage any more individual or collective life decisions, beloved, pause. Ask yourself, did I pray first? And there's another element of the believer's prayer. It is answered. Prayer is not a futile exercise. How do we know? Beginning in verse 15 of that chapter in James, the text says that the prayer of faith or the believer's prayer will save. The Lord will raise. Sins will be forgiven so that you may be healed. 
Those are answers. And indeed, there is power in the believer's prayer. Something happens, even if it is only unexplainable peace in the midst of life storms. It wasn't the elders who healed when they were called. It wasn't the oil that healed. It was the believer's prayer, the prayer of faith that God will save the sick, and in some interpretations, God will save those who were troubled in body and spirit and lift them out of despair. And pay attention to this. In one of the verses, verse 17, the writer refers to the great prophet Elijah. Elijah's prayers in the name of the living God were filled with faith in good times and in bad times. He sought God for protection and provision as he followed God's instruction to bring the Hebrew children back to fellowship with God and avoid the distractions of the false idols. However, despite all the miracles that accompanied Elijah's prayers, he was a human. Elijah was not God. Elijah was not Jesus. Elijah was not Holy Spirit. Elijah was a human being, and yet Elijah could get a prayer through, a prayer that was powerful because Elijah had faith in God. And here's the thing. I say all of this um, to let you know that no high status or number of material goods are needed in order for your prayer to be answered. That's a blessing. My kid came to me the other day, and she had a friend who was experiencing all kinds of trauma due to stressful circumstances in her family and unintentional hurt from other church members. She had challenges on her job, disloyalty from her partner. And this friend grew up in church, and she loved God, but was overwhelmed by blows after blow of painful life situations. I am sure that all of us can relate to that. And so some of these situations were connected to unhealthy choices. And my, mom, my, my, my kid said to me, hey, mom, with you being a preacher and all, I know that you're closer to God than I am. And you can get a prayer through. God will listen to you. And I had to stop my kid right there, um, because while I am happy to join her in prayer on behalf of her friend, because this was what we are called to do, I, like Elijah, am a human being, and the God that I worship would hear and receive my child's faithful prayer just as much as my prayer. And the true question is, do you pray? Do you offer your prayer in faith? Believe. Be convinced God will move in God's own way to supply the need you may not even have known that you had. And so the believer's prayer is active and it is answered. And here's the last piece. It's one of accountability. So what, am I, what I mean by that? In a community of accountability, it may at first seem uncomfortable to admit to yourself and to others in your faith community that sometimes you struggle. Because we like to present ourselves as perfect sometimes, but we're all here to help each other, right? So for instance, in many times, I said that I wanted to meditate on scripture and, and, and journal a little bit before I fell asleep. And so many times, Brother Smart, I feel that. Am I by myself? Am I the only one that tries and I fall asleep? I set up my study area all nice and it's ready to go. And I do it later on so that the rest of the house won't distract me. So I can really be connected to God. I do all of that only to wake up with the Bible nicely resting on my chest and the glasses still on my face. <laughs> so now I know you're with me. <laughs> I can make excuses to myself 
especially in isolation. However, it's harder to do when you have an accountability partner. So it felt good when I came back to the church and I started talking about it. And I shared with a trusted faith partner, only to find out that I wasn't the only one struggling with the problem. So it was a relief. And of course, our goal is not to remain in that state. It's to grow, right? Instead, what we did, instead of just staying in that place, we listened to each other. We prayed for each other. We helped each other to brainstorm other ways of meeting our commitment to God. So maybe we could pray again. Maybe we needed to choose a different time or a different setting. Do you see what I mean? God desires for us to be in faithful community, offering faithful prayers for the sake of faithful ministry and healthy members of the faithful community. When we do that, we're better equipped to do the faithful work of the world. So if somebody in the community strays, check on them. Check on them with love. There's a difference between somebody wandering away and running away. Wandering away reminds me of the metaphor of a sheep who gets distracted for whatever reason and doesn't keep up with the flock. Maybe that person stops volunteering at church or misses regular worship. In the text, there's no mention of judging that person, only the blessing in the one who notices that something is up and actively checks in. This is what prayer, faithful prayer does. It gives us the power to be in relationship to the point where we notice that something is missing or someone is missing. It gives us the power to actively seek out that one. It gives us the power to not make assumptions as to why the person was missing, but to actually ask them first, are you okay? and listen to them. Were they sick? Did they feel left out? Were they exhausted from taking care of their family? It allows us to honor the best intentions of the person who wandered away. But the believer's prayer gives us also the power of discernment. It gives us the power to forgive, to forgive in a way that covers, that covers any mistakes that's been made. And just like our faithful prayers can, be, can help others to be accountable, it's good to know that somebody in the community is praying for us, covering us. When, not if, we mess up or wander. And ultimately, the blessing is in the fact that if for some reason nobody else on this earth came after us to bring us back to community, don't have to be worried because God will seek us out and stand ready to bring us back to the truth, to the gospel, to the good news that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God to restore our faith when we fall off the wagon so that we can be men uh, mentally and spiritually well together. Sometimes, talk to Pastor Dion about this, sometimes we have not because we ask not. We sang about that this morning. And James mentions it earlier in the text. You want to change in your life? You want to change in the world? Pray, beloved, about all things in good times and bad. For this part of discipleship, this part of discipleship, this part of discipleship, Actively practice prayer. Know that God answers prayer. Engage your faith community so that you are accountable in your prayer life. The believer's prayer is powerful. For God will answer your prayer and meet the needs that you didn't even know that you had. I have to share this as I take my seat. I struggled with cancer. It was during COVID. So that means nobody could come with me to any of my travels. 
I didn't even realize it until the day that I rang the bell and the person in radiology said, did you bring anybody with you? And I said, no. And I realized every, every doctor's appointment, every treatment, chemo on through, I wasn't allowed to bring anybody. I didn't even realize it. I didn't say anything to anybody. I was like, yay. I cried. I thank God. I rang the bell. And then I went home. And I went on to the next day, just doing life as usual, working, taking care of the kids. And then all of a sudden, the children took me and they said, we want to go somewhere. Come on, go with us. And they took me to my sister in law's house. And the next thing I know, there was this, you know how they had those parades during COVID? There was this parade of people that I didn't even know was aware that I was sick. Hadn't seen them in forever. It comes driving by. And they get out and they give me a hug. And then the next thing I know, they gotten around and circled me. And they laid their hands on me, and they start praying for me. When I tell you I just about fell out, I did. I didn't even know. I was just going along, and I, I knew God was with me. But I'm just going along, and I'm like, it's fine. It's okay. It's COVID. I'm going to be by myself. But when that community of faith laid their hands on me, hallelujah, and they started I didn't even know that I needed it. And this is what I'm telling you right now, that the believer's prayer, even if you just, you're not the, not the strongest prayer, you're not the person that's going to stand in front of the congregation and pray, it doesn't matter. Because if you believe, God knows. Only God knows your heart. And God will give you the strength to do the work that comes with that. And God will answer in ways you didn't even know you needed. And God will put that community of faith around you to remind you, I'm not far away. I'm right here with you. And here's proof. Take these words and may God bless you and keep you this morning. Amen and amen. Amen. Can you join me in uh, in prayer, I have a request. I have a request. Lord, I'm so lifting up this one. Oh God, we come to you right now thanking you for the word that has gone forth. We pray, oh God, that there is a faithful response that there is something about the word that touched someone's heart, that made somebody think, that made some relationship real. We pray, oh God, that you continue to bless and keep this congregation as they do the work that you have called them to do. Bless, oh God, those who are sick. Bless Pastor Dion, all the other ones on the sick and shut in, List. Bless God and hear the needs of the people that they have not vocalized. And, oh, God, for the people affected by the hurricanes, we have a member here whose daughter is in North Carolina in her whole town. Wrap your arms around them. Let them know that you are there and provide the resources, oh, God, that they need to not only be safe but to restore their lives even better than when they left them. It's all these things we pray in your name, Jesus, and we count them done, and we pray with the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us today. as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. In the name of Jesus.
kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> the prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. May we offer our gifts as a prayer of trust that God provides, a prayer of resistance that declares creation's abundance and sufficiency, and a prayer of hope that needs can be met. We pray with our mouths, our hearts, and our spirits. Let us also pray with our time our talents, and our treasure. Let us read the prayer of dedication together. God, thank you for hearing our prayer, receiving these gifts, and making them holy for your kingdom. Bless and honor every prayer. Enlarge our territory and renew the resources as a demonstration of generosity and flourishing in your realm. Amen.
every time I feel the spirit, I will pray. Every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. I have a heartache, I have a woe. God bless you. Thank you for this time this morning and receive this blessing. May the love of our God and the sweet communion of God's Holy Spirit rest on you, rule, abide, hear your prayers, answer your prayers, give you strength to do the work that you need to do throughout this week and forevermore. Let everyone say amen and amen.